You probably can't hear it, but number three is trying to escape. Let me grab him. This is number three. He's adorable, but an escape artist. Oh my god, I can't deal. Can you see his thumbs? He's just four weeks old. Hey everyone, it's Emily Fox. Today's video is going to be all about the best post apocalyptic books I have read since doing my last video like this uh, three years ago, almost day per day, like March of 2020. I love that genre, or I thought so back in the day, and then when I did that video, I reviewed about like 20 books, and I realized that none of them were five stars. And I took a break because I realized maybe I just like the idea of the concept and I don't really enjoy reading these books But at the end of the day, you don't need to give a book five stars to actually enjoy it But since then I have read seven and most of them within the last year and most of them I gave five stars to So something switched and these books worked for me. So we're gonna go through them I'm gonna do kind of a top five and then I mentioned the two that didn't really work for me and then a little bit of the ones that are still on my TBR. Some of them have been on my TBR since the last video, so let's get to it. Let's start with one of my favorites, The Earthsea Duology by Octavia E. Butler. She has become very quickly one of my all-time favorite authors. This duology, which was meant to be a trilogy, we'll come back to that, uh, you have Parable of the Sower, book one, and then Parable of the Talons, book two, which I think I like even more. I love the world because in this case, the apocalyptic uh, setting feels so realistic because there's no big disease, big like contact with aliens or anything. Like it's just a slow crumbling of society. You have a rise of religious extremist, like specifically like a president that wants to make America great again. And you have uh, company towns and just like things are getting worse and worse and worse. And she lives in this little wall neighborhood with her family. And she basically creates her own religion Earth seed, which th that was the part I wasn't fully sold on in the first book, but eventually she wants to create a community where people will be able to help out each other instead of just uh, destroying each other trying to survive. So that's a duology. Um, I was saying how this was meant to be a trilogy and unfortunately the author passed away before she had a chance to complete it. With that said, I would not be okay reading this if there was like a cliffhanger at the end of book two, which there are not. One thing to know about her is that usually your series, you're following a different character with each book, you're usually like going forward in time too. So you're following still a bit of the story of the characters in book one, of course, but through the eyes of someone else. So I feel like that helps each book to um, be complete and feel complete on its own. Like you obviously will get more. We would have gotten more with book three, basically, but it's still satisfying as an ending uh, for book two. So you can totally read this. This was amazing. Like I said, book two is one of my favorite one by her and I just can't recommend this enough because again, feels super realistic. Obviously a ton of trigger warnings, especially for book two. Uh, I think my Goodreads review something like uh, one of the best books I've ever read, but I never want to read it again because, oh my gosh, she's so good at making you care about certain characters, but also hate <laughs> some. Uh, there's a specific one in here that I, I'm not violent, but I, I might make an exception for that person because, oh my gosh. Uh, but yes. <laughs> oh, and by the way, the author has mentioned that her books are very dark, but uh, there's always a message of hope. It's just sometimes it's very, very deep down, but so worth it. Love these. It's a classic. If you haven't read any Butler, you need to, but again, best post apocalyptic. Yes, Earthseed. Another one that quickly became a favorite too is the Book of the Unnamed Midwife. I have been raving about this one quite a bit too. This is technically also part of a series. I think they're more companion novels. I haven't picked them up because I've heard that they're not as good, but I will, I will, I promise. But you can read this as a standalone and it's perfect that way. In this one, you're following this woman. She wakes up uh, in the hospital. She was a nurse and there's been a big pandemic that killed most of humanity. Like. 99% of people and it's especially uh, effective on women especially children so if they're giving birth they're pretty much guaranteed to die and she's trying to keep herself but also the people that she will meet as safe as possible hence the whole like midwife thing in the title you never know her name again hence the unnamed and it's incredibly bleak. I do want to mention I feel like a lot of the post-apocalyptic books that I've read tend to be very violent like often military actually, none of these are because it's not my thing, I've realized that. And a lot of time I felt like there was a lot of sexual violence, which makes sense, of course it would happen, but I felt like sometimes it felt a bit too like gratuitous. 
And actually, you'll notice there's no male authors in my top five. And I don't know if that's the difference, because again, if you go back to look at my other video, a lot of the books like The Stand, Swan Song, I felt like that about these books. Like I know they're really popular and I enjoyed parts of it, but it felt too gratuitous at time. And I feel like in this one, yes, trigger warnings, there is a uh, like an attempted rape scene in the beginning and afterwards there's obviously some awful things that happen but it's mostly implied so I feel like you're not gonna get like a 30 page essay about a essay scene you know uh so yes this was great uh very different from a lot of the other ones I had been reading it's less action driven which again a lot of the ones in here are like that and it just worked better for me so love this one can't recommend this enough and like I said I personally need to try and continue if you have let me know because like I said I've heard like that it's kind of a hit and miss but this was absolutely fantastic and again it doesn't seem like it throughout the book but I feel like it hands on a a little bit of an hopeful uh, note, which is appreciated whenever you read dark books like this. <laughs> the next one took me by surprise. I really wasn't expecting to enjoy this because look at this, um, the last. I actually was sent this in a box of mystery thriller books. So didn't even know it was post-apocalyptic. I think it does a huge disservice to this book to call it anything but post-apocalyptic because if you read this, because you enjoy, like, I think it's categorized as a thriller, no, or like a mystery, a mystery, murder mystery. Mm -mm, mm -mm. Post-apocalyptic. Would not recommend this if you enjoy murder mysteries and not post-apocalyptic. Anyway, uh, I, the only reason I picked it up because I think this cover is absolutely ugly is because I put all my mystery thriller books in a jar and pick one and it ended up being this one. I thought I would read the first chapter and get rid of it. Like I really didn't think I was going to love it and I was so wrong. And I feel like because my expectations were so low, I ended up really, really enjoying it. So you're following the story of this man. He is uh, traveling to Switzerland in this remote hotel. He had a conference there and there's just a bunch of people from all over the world. And there is an announcement, their phone goes off uh, in the beginning and uh, there's been a nuclear bomb in Washington and then they see it happening all over the world. So they have absolutely no idea what's going on because of course they lose electricity, internet, and they're in this remote hotel and not everyone speaks English, the main character is American. And it's really interesting to follow the story through his eyes. He basically is writing uh, journal entries. And the reason that they're calling this a murder mystery is that early on he finds the body of a little girl and he tries to distract himself by like trying to figure out what's, what happened. And because there's no electricity, he can't really watch the cameras and he can't really interrogate everyone because again, not everyone speaks English. So it does affect the story, but again, it's purely post-apocalyptic. I really enjoy the fact that once again, it wasn't super violent. There's obviously some violence, just putting it out there. Um, but a lot of it is focused on surviving, focusing again on the murder mystery. And I felt like every time uh, it felt like the story was going to be in going in direction I wasn't really interested in, or that would be a bit too cliche, the author wouldn't go there. And I really appreciated that also. And yeah, it took me by surprise quite a bit. Uh, the ending was good. I feel like that's often the biggest complaint with post-apocalyptic, the endings, but this one was good, not like amazing, but again, my expectations were so low and I ended up really, really enjoy this. I, I would, I would reread this. I would reread this. So yeah, this was great, the last. So it's so not a thriller though. I'm, mm. And whoever did this cover did the author dirty. I would have never picked it up. Okay, the last one might be a little bit of a stretch to call it a post-apocalyptic book, but I think it counts. I think it counts. Um, it was written in the 60s and 68. So it was influenced by obviously the wars and everything uh, going on, but The Wall. I just, just read this and I need to keep raving about this. So you're following the story through the eyes of this woman. She is uh, vacationing in the Austrian mountains with a couple and then they go into the city and uh, leave her behind and then they don't come home. So eventually she goes to figure out what happened. She walks to the little town to figure out what happened and she realizes that she's stuck behind an invisible wall and she doesn't know what happened. She can't really see it really well, but it's kind of implied that possibly something happened. That's why I'm saying post-apocalyptic. You will have to just go for it. And then you're just following her trying to survive alone with only a cat, a dog, and a cow for companions. As she is writing her story, uh, she has been at it for two and a half years and it's very much like day-to-day -day life, trying to survive, trying to plant things, eat things, keep yourself warm, uh, keeping the animals safe. So it's very, 
day to day, it's a little bit depressing, which clearly is my thing. But I really enjoyed some of her thoughts also thought process, thinking about humanity, how she used to live compared to now, like how pointless some of the things were, uh, the way she used to be concerned about certain things. And I really enjoy this. I can't, I can't say of anything else because like I said, it's very much like survivalist, which I think is really linked to post-apocalyptic. Anyway, loved it. Like I said, the ending broke my heart. I am still very mad about it, but it was good. And it deserves all the love. There's also a movie which, for some reason, I cannot find anywhere in Canada. Like, online. I've looked. I've looked. Trust me. Can't find it anywhere. One day I will, but if you can see it, definitely would recommend watching it after reading the book, of course. And yeah, this was fantastic. Can't rave about this enough. It was great. The last book in the official top five. I don't know if everyone is going to agree or not, but I can't spoil it because the book is like 30 something pages. <laughs> so it's a novella. Um, it's Emergency Skin by N.K. Jemisin. It's part of the uh, Ford collection exclusive to Amazon. If you haven't checked it out, this is the best one in my opinion. Might not be everyone's favorite, but it's definitely top three of everyone for sure. Uh, so this one is talking about this person that is sent back to earth to try to get things that they need because humanity escaped the shit show that was happening and uh, that person is warned that you know the planet is going to be a mess be prepared for it so that's kind of the topic hence the like post-apocalyptic i think it counts um i don't want to again say anything else because it is so short but personally i've really really enjoyed this one and i thought i would give it a shout out also nanke jemison has another series the broken earth trilogy which is fantasy but also post-apocalyptic like the world is kind of ending for the fifth time hence the fifth season for the first title and kind of counts too. Want to throw out there because her books are great. So I mentioned I had read seventh book. Uh, one of them, The Wanderers, I DNF'd. I did not finish it. Um, I got it three times from the library as an audiobook. And I think the book is like 800, 900 pages. I couldn't do it. I literally couldn't do it. I was so bored, but it's quite popular. So it might just be me. Um, in this case, you're following just a bunch of people walking for ever. But there's artificial intelligence, so if you want to explore post-apocalyptic with that, it could be one to check out. But like I said, personally, not a fan. Um, and the other one I did overall like, although I found it too short, is uh, Moon of the Crusted Snow. And in this one, what I like is that you're following post-apocalyptic, but like something happens uh, in the big city, but most of the story you're following is on a reservation. So it's really interesting to see like post-apocalyptic post-apocalyptic setting uh through the like native eyes so like their culture uh their views and then again trying to survive in the community whenever the people are trying to come in to you know feel safe find food bring chaos uh and yeah it was good but it was 200 pages some people have told me that this is actually going to be serious so if it is i will continue to try it out because like i said my only complaint is that it's too short so i feel like you needed more so you can see overall, I had a really great year-ish uh, reading more post-apocalyptic books because I kept finding new ones that I would give four or five stars, which I never used to give. And I don't know if it's because they were pretty much all female authors. I don't know. Or if it's just because, like I said, they tended to be less sexually violent or just less military, like World War Three. <laughs> World War Three, <III. laughs> World War Z, um, you know these kind of concept is just not really my thing, and that's okay. However, I do have more books that are on my TBR and on my shelf. So, quickly, I think some of these I have shown actually in that last video, which is shameful. Um, the next one, I think I'm gonna put it on my TBR for May because so many of you told me that this was giving similar vibes as the other ones. This is Good Morning Midnight, and I believe you're following, uh, is it an astronomer? Yeah, and she works in the Arctic, and I'm assuming the apocalypse happened, which I guess she's safe over there. She's safe, although only if she, it's just her. Have you heard of what's really happening? Uh, in those remote locations, they're not sending female scientists anymore because they keep getting SA. So yeah, we're gonna stick to fiction. Um, and the other one really quickly, I have shown these, I'm sure. Metro 2033, The Road, shamefully, I haven't read that one. I watched a movie, it's just the writing styles of it. So I have just a bunch, like I said, a bunch, this one you can't even read. Uh, Earth Abides, On the Beach, 
the dog stars which i think this one is also a bit more chill i made it sound like all of these were really chill but the first two by activity butler definitely have a bit more action but yes i am fully back to reading post-apocalyptic if you have any recommendations let me know whether they're like this or not i mean other people will have different tastes in the comment section if you have any recommendations for anyone let us know and if you have any opinions on the ones i mentioned also let us know and yeah that's it thumbs up subscribe i will be putting more videos on the screen that i recommend you check out and i will see you in a video very soon bye